Here is a wonderful interview with Paul Kent, one of the pioneers of distance longboarding. Right now, he is undergoing the push skate relay across the United States. This relay is an attempt to recreate Jack Smith's original 1971 push skate relay across the United States, where they skated across on fiberlight skateboards right when soft wheels were invented. Anyway, Jack Smith is the owner of the Morrow Bay Skateboard Museum, and he has done this trip five other times, but this time he is part of the support crew supporting four other riders, including Miles Kipper, Andy Andrus, Paul Kent himself, and then Rick Stubblefield. And these four are trying to set a fastest known time across the United States. Paul Kent is most famous for skating across Peru, Bolivia, Morocco, unsupported backpacking, but this is a little bit of a different endeavor where he's trying to skate across as fast as possible with this relay team across the United States with the support of a van and Jack Smith and his family. Anyway, here's the interview. We're going to talk to Paul Kent. Um, he's one of my favorite riders. Um, definitely one of my favorite people all around. Um, he's been, he's been a, a fierce competitor in um, distance skateboarding for ages um i don't even know i guess since the dawn of distance skating as it became more official um paul was uh dominating during the the, the first like adrenalina series um which was when i met him personally um and i remember when i when i first raced him you know to me he was the man to beat um i watched all of the uh, long long treks on skate decks stuff from um, shoot back in the like early 2000s and really I would attribute Paul to uh, largely to, to get me getting me into to skateboarding um, in in the way in in distance anyway so um, oh looks like he joined so you know without further ado hey hey Going. Good man. I was just uh, sitting here by myself, <laughs> singing, <laughs> singing your praises. <laughs> I miss, I miss most of it. Um, I only heard that I got you in skateboarding. That how, how? I thought. Well, I don't know. What? What? I guess what I mean to say is when I started, um, when I started getting into skateboarding, and you know, and like when I decided I wanted a longboard, right? Like I was, I was watching your videos, um, back in, you know, shoot, you know, in the first, the first video that you did, I remember I was watching like land, land yachts videos of them going down these like little golf cart, golf course paths and stuff. And, and I don't, I don't remember the exact time that I first watched your video, but I remember I bought my first skateboard in like 2007. Does that, does that ring a bell? Yeah, I mean, I didn't. I wasn't there for that, but I was. No. Around oh. That that was when I was. That was when I started. That's when I did. Actually, 2007 would have been when I skateboarded through B, across BC. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I, I didn't see long treks then. So when when was the first? 2009. 2009. Early, okay. early 2009, we started doing stuff. Okay, um, so that makes that makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah, because I I. I got into skateboarding. I was like downhilling in Nashville, Tennessee, down downhilling. Right, and I was like trying to bomb hills with no helmet, like a total coup. Yeah, and and then well, close, he was close to uh, West Virginia. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. I was not that far from from some good hills, but uh, I'm glad that I I wasn't close to them at the time because I would have hurt myself. But um, <laughs> yeah, I like I so I yeah. I mean, I totally you know, just hurt myself on hills back then. And then um, when I, whenever I moved back to Indiana, which is where I'm from, um, you know, at that point, I, I started getting into distance skating. There was like this trail nearby. And, uh, and then I was watching your watching your videos and, and getting inspired. So now that oh. thanks for helping me out with the timeline there. <laughs> wow. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah, man. Well, I'm, it wasn't long after that that we, you know, that we first met. Yeah, that would be in 2010. Yeah. 2010. Yeah. 
Long time ago. Awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's everybody doing? Well, <laughs> that's well. That's what I kind of wanted to, to lead with um, towards you, if you if you don't mind. Um, I feel like you know we don't really know how, how long the internet connection is going to stay good for, <laughs> and you've had a long yeah. day. So, um, I wanted to ask you. Uh, how 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 are you feeling? I mean, wh how how many days have you guys been skating so far? Oh, uh, we started on the twentieth, so I think that puts us at uh, twelve or thirteen. Or, it was days would be the thirteenth, yeah, thirteenth okay. day. So um, tomorrow's the fourteenth uh, day, and then we've got maybe two more days before we're done. But it depends. Today we were on track to do like the most miles out of any day, and then we got hit by this like I don't know four. 40 mile an hour wind, so it was gonna blow. It looked like it was gonna blow the stop signs off the posts. Oh my God. Um, so like, uh, it shut us down to like, um, geez, I think it shut me down to like, uh, like probably like 12 kilometers an hour, which is not a lot, like eight miles an hour. And then uh, I think that maybe Andy might have pushed a little harder through the wind, but I try to chill and fight my battles. I keep a higher average because I I don't I'm not as affected by the uh, the wind when I'm climbing hills mm -hmm. or uh, and then I tuck and so yeah. I don't depend at the end there I eked out a pretty fast time for the last leg and I got probably twice as far I I, I kept ahead of the van for like half the time so <laughs> they were trying to chase me they were getting scared <laughs> were you going to hell at that point. I was up and down, so um, that yeah, that we we got we're just in a part of Idaho where it's getting hilly mm -hmm. after a really flat section, and again, I just uh, you know I have a lot of tricks for hills, so I just like swing my arms a certain way depending on the grade. I change the direction of swing, and uh, and then I can tuck on the way down pretty good. So there's some some hills that were I mean, with a lot of headwinds still, so I had to fight to go, you know, quick enough to make it feel like a hill. But, but it wasn't bad. No, I um, I doubled the distance there on the last leg. Uh, that that would have been expected in the time frame. So basically, doubled my pace using the hills. So, and the, um, that you going or how how long right now? Pardon me? How how long are the legs guys are going right now? So uh, we're. Doing five miles for the most part, which is, um, it varies though. It varies by person and the situation. Sometimes they'll let some of us stay out a little bit later. Uh, I also like to kind of push it. Like a lot of the time I'll try to go fast. So that way I get more miles that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, usually it's the day you typically starts with Andy. Andy's like gung-ho to get out there. He's like on the East Coast time. So it's easy, you know. Oh, he's on yeah. Eastern time. <laughs> yeah, the Western we were like, ah, <laughs> but anyway, um, so Andy gets going in the morning, and uh, and then he does pretty good with the miles. Sometimes I don't know how he gets them all, but he he, he does it. Like, he's getting miles. Uh, he he takes a lot of uh, long legs, so he's he's doing really good. Um, then uh, I think with me, I try, I, I tend to have a, a higher pace just because I'm bouncing, but at the same time, I'm also like bordering on injuring myself doing that, and I have other injuries which suck. Um, and Miles is like a freaking tank, like that dude. Yeah, man, and like he's he's actually like becoming quite the freaking hill climber himself. It's pretty good to see. That's yeah. awesome. But he works, he's working on those hills, but it's it's fucking rad. Start swearing, guys. It's bad. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we've got uh. Uh, Rick, Rick is going to be going out tomorrow uh, ahead. He's going to leave the hotel. Mm -hmm. and we have a little bit of backtracking to do through the hilly parts. Mm -hmm. So um, Miles, Andy, and I will be pruning up the last of the hills that we have behind the hotel, and then we're going to go up and join up with Rick, and then we'll uh, continue on that way. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So, so does the car, like, su supply your guys' working together the whole time? So is, it, yeah. is the car going to follow you, Andy? And miles, and then Rick's gonna push ahead. Rick's gonna take an uh, extended backpack. Is this Wi-Fi? 
I don't know. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was hoping to get the questions on here, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so with, uh, yeah, the for the most part is the vehicle yep. drives, uh, drops the skater, well, drives ahead, guys. and then they wait there, and they release the next guy. And then okay. when the skater catches up to the van, then they drive ahead of the person on the road, and then they wait for that guy while they release the next. And typically that's what we do all day. And so the van's pretty well moving with us, and it doesn't really backtrack for any reason. So it's a pretty decent gauge of where we are. So I just leave my uh, tracking beacon, the one that's on the loaded. Mm. I mean, I don't think anybody actually knows about it, but there's a live update. For two days, I didn't turn it on because I didn't think loaded were actually using it because they told me they weren't going to. And then I was just like, they're like, where? why isn't it working? I'm like, wow. So anyways, there's two days that are missing on that data. But you can still go on there and track it, uh, see where we are. Uh, pretty well accurate to the 10, 10, every 10 minutes, I think. So, um, wow. yeah. Yeah. Technology. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, these watches are really uh, bonkers, uh, what they do. I can see the hill ahead of me and see how steep it is and see the climb ahead of me and see how steep it is. And it navigates offline, I, except in the Yukon. doesn't work in the Yukon, <laughs> which, which could have come in handy last year. But <laughs> it's just like, can I eat today? I got nothing. Uh, is that like a part? The trip like all of you guys have the same gear well we have a lot of similar gear we all have the same watches i have the smaller one because in canada they were sold out of the big one and uh so yeah. so they all have the big fancy ones with the batteries and the extra lights and extra antennas and what but, is it but uh garmin? it's a garmin phoenix we all have garmin phoenix sevens yeah okay. by coincidence i think but i mean kind of coincidence they're actually they're the best thing for the navigating and being on the road um like i said you can do offline maps like i can search for a grocery store outside of cellular range oh wow. and as long as i'm not in the yukon it'll route me <laughs> so i can be in the middle of the mountains with no cell phone and it'll show me it'll you you have to update the map every year but it keeps the current all the businesses all across like north america I so it's throw right. it on the watch so it's pretty rad <laughs> yeah and then Phoenix. I, I also, I mean, I like paper maps because I come from a time where we needed map and compass and we didn't trust GPS. Um, did some orienteering with the army as well. Uh, so, but I, I, I bought like a crap load of maps for this trip. Like I spent a small fortune and then I forgot them at home. So I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty bummed, pretty bummed about that. So, uh, some, uh, let me, can I, can I, can I leave this window and come right back? Is that something I can do? I can um, test it. I, I tried doing it. it we'll test it. Seem like it. If it doesn't work, I'll come back. Okay. It's still work, working on the little on the little thing. Okay, so if I go... Nope. <laughs> nope. Now he's gone. Now he's gone. Am I back? Okay, you're back. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I can go from here to look at the questions. Uh, but I wanted to see who asked the question. But one of the guys, and I'll shout them out later, asked... Um, roughly, I might be, may not be remembering correct, correctly, but how do we plan our routes? And mm, okay. uh, so, since, since we're kind of on the topic, I mean, for the most part, Dylan, uh, Jack Smith's son, is the main navigator. And so he's doing that. Um, is that working? Put up my spot. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to really click around that much. I'm just going to read the questions. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, um, so, do, can I see it here uh, without clicking in on them? I'm probably just going to have to open them all up. Can I download all of them mm -hmm. right now? Download all attachments. So I want to, of course, I want to allow downloads for Google. It's my so Google. Uh, we got, we got yeah. questions coming right now, too. So um, okay. are you still using Grease for your bearings? Am I still using Grease for my bearings? That's an excellent question. So what I'm doing here is because I have the luxury of a view. Mm -hmm. I am running Riptide's uh, uh, fast stuff, uh, but I have a set of grease bearings. So if it's really, uh, if it's rainy, I just grab that board and I expect it would, I, I wouldn't need to replace it for anything. And it still rolls pretty good. I just thought the other stuff might roll just a tiny bit faster. Um, so what I did is I did the whole gasoline treatment. It's actually funny because 
we were in uh, what town was it? It's Williamsburg, right? So we're in Williamsburg, Virginia, and uh, Miles and I, and uh, we we go we went out looking to buy degreaser, isopropyl alcohol, and then we went to a gas station, and then I put my card in, and they wanted me to use a uh, a zip code, and I don't have a zip code, right? So we used Miles' card, and he was all like, "Oh, I don't know about this." Unless we, I've got like a little water bottle, and I'm putting gas in like a water bottle. <laughs> Super sketchy looking. Mm -hmm. And I managed to just pump enough that it didn't register as a scent. So I got I got like this much gasoline and for zero cents. Oh, free gas. And then I used <laughs> to watch <laughs> free gas, guys. <laughs> so I got free gas. Yeah, and then we uh, <laughs> I rinsed out my bearings with it really quick and got a really bad headache for the first day of skating. <laughs> Oh god. Because that hotel, the fan didn't work. So <laughs> it was a bad time. Actually no, I did the gas outside, but the isopropyl got me uh got me a headache for the entire next day. So, <laughs> but I got the grease and the bearings and those bearings are just gonna last forever now and uh and then um I'm running a set of dry bearings just because I think it's a little faster. Uh, you, but I don't think it's it's not that big of a deal. I probably don't need to, but they're just nicer bearings bearings too so i just thought i would do it that way when you say yeah. dry you don't mean like dry you mean with with the uh the, the lube that you got from riptide yeah sorry it's 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 ripped it's it's for dry conditions oh. it's their fast lube for dry conditions and then um and then i've got the grease stuff for just the worst conditions and uh and so the grease are in a pair of bones bearings with the integral sh uh spacers and then for my fast bearings on my like on the uh, the quest, I'm running um, uh, bones big balls with uh, era spacers and stuff. So and that other uh, lubricant. And I just rinsed out the, the stock lube with uh, isopropyl. Okay. So that's probably a, probably should cut the answers a bit shorter, but you know, <laughs> first one. It, and even thinking about spacers to me, it's like I, I haven't thought about. No, spacers in between. no, for sure. <laughs> but the, the bearings, um, Kevin said that they were superior, so I believe Kevin. Yeah. Uh, Kevin with his stuff, so yeah. I, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, if you think it's a better deal, then uh, let's do let's do that. So, yeah. Okay. Um. So I, I, for fear of, because I think we get an hour. So. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's try, I'll, I'll try to go. I'll try to be more. Well, no, it's more. Yeah. It's just I, I want to try. I'll try not to talk into the answers. Give a seminar. <laughs> give a seminar. <laughs> you ask him a question and he gives you a seminar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, I got um. Okay. Well, I, I got I got I got one from Adam Ornelas. Um, oh hey. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he wanted to know um. How has okay yeah. How has longboard tech changed the way you ride since 2010? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if it's uh, changed that much uh, because I, I mean, Jeff makes the board that I asked another company to make, essentially. Um, I really wanted, you know, maybe a bit less, I think I wanted a similar drop, but I wanted the the, the uh, radial drop or crescent drop. So we're uh, but that's nice. So I can run a shorter wheelbase on even the same length board. The board is maybe uh, maybe in some situations maybe feels a little tight when I'm in my tuck. Like my heel just touches the base plate a little bit, and I, I don't know. I kind of don't like that. Um, and otherwise, I'm a little cramped, and I sit higher, and I have more frontal area, so that slows me down. So I think maybe uh, maybe it's just still just a tiny bit, tiny bit. Too short, but I really appreciate the shorter wheelbase. Like I've always wanted it to be short, my, my, my boards to be shorter for racing situations. So I think it's a more racy board. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, the Kegels fit barely, very like they, they kind of don't fit. I kind of have to kind of like make it work. But I, because I, because I run a 45 degree, 46 degree front with an inward rake, a, like a bunch of rake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the K4s have a ton of rake. And then uh, on the back, I'm running 38. And um, I have very good reasons for why I do that. Um, and I'm reminded of that every day that I'm on this trip. Uh, so, um, but, but because of that, I'm 
very limited for wheel space. Uh, so the key goes, I can just get going and having the larger wheel is, it's nice. And they're not so large that I don't have issues with control. I'm very excited for maybe trying new urethanes from your thing, but uh, cause they, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but they're working on some stuff. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. If, yeah, if, off the record, guys. Step of, of this as it like, uh, you know, what do you call it? Well, anyway, if I write up this interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was a, that, that was a hard one to sum up. Um, maybe I'll just really quickly say the 46 degree front is really important on rough stuff mm -hmm. to keep the board going straight and not having it hunting. Uh, it's also very important if for debris and when you're on like a, a narrow shoulder, if your wheel pops off the shoulder and comes back on, there happens to be a semi beside you, like right on top of the white line um, with a very active front end. Sometimes it will shoot off and then like shoot you and then it'll like it'll wob the opposite way mm -hmm. and send you into that, that truck, which is terrifying for everybody. Um, and so the 46 is very important, I think, for 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 that rough, rough, rough mountain road stuff. And it also just makes me feel more confident on the fast. It means I can't pump very well. Now, I have been running the supersonic with the uh, with a 40, uh, 44 degree front and a 30 rear on the back wedge. Mm -hmm. And that's been sweet for mellow terrain. And then if I want, I can actually swap those base plates front to back. And then I emulate my my angles for my down for my, for my regular board. Mm -hmm. So I can run the supersonic set up exactly the same way, just with a quick truck swap front to back. If it's rainy and I want to run the, that board in the rain and I don't want to, uh, you know, jeopardize the other ones like dry lubricants. Uh, so, oh, okay. uh, so, so, I'll, so uh, if, I, if it's a technical rainy day, I'll just swap the base plates and I'll run it pretty well the same. I still like the ability to pop the board and catch it because that saves me from wearing out my shoes because I don't because I'm using running shoes essentially. Okay. So I don't want a foot break at all. I don't want a foot break at all. So um ask you pop yeah. the board up and catch it. That sounds kind of oh, like thirty kilometers an hour maybe, maybe or like you know, um like 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 Jesus Christ lizard running speed sometimes. Um but <laughs> uh no I, I can slide or whatever, slow myself down and then uh yeah. or or even carve, like it would slarve a bit. I slarve quite a bit, yeah. slide and carve. And then from there, I get it down to a uh, running pace. And then I pop, catch, jog it off really quick. You can stop fast. You can start again. It's really useful for train tracks. So yeah, That's you do bust a slide, line yourself back up, step on the tail, or if you have a low degree base plate, you can step on the back of the base plate, pop it, catch it, jog across the tracks, throw down. You don't lose that last 20 kilometers an hour you just keep that in the bank and then mm. keep going from there so that way you're not starting from a stop and you don't have to load yourself up too much i've done like a how-to video on this because we we need it on our on our page well, i'm gonna be doing yeah sure let's do it actually i thought if we were gonna do if we're gonna talk about that board we should uh the quests and stuff we should uh, teach people how to read the, read the, read the quest yeah an actual quest. have you have so yeah a nexus I, sorry this is kind of like on a tangent but you started going into the <laughs> the, the, the um the wheel base nexus. thing you have a nexus okay yeah do you, do you step on do you does your heel touch the base plate when you do that on, on the nexus because it's the same mold but we just the same mold, yeah. we push it out a little, little bit further and, and oh, make the make the active you know and, i haven't really thought about it um the most part, I haven't done any big hills on the Nexus. I've just been doing like sliding around like tight pathways and stuff, yeah. uh, just so you get the feel of it. Um, it might be better. Yeah, yeah, it might it might be better. Um, let, I'll take a look. I'll take a look and get back to you on that. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. We can get back to the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, let's get back to the questions. People wanted to hear themselves. People want want to be involved. Do you want to go? And I want them to be involved too. Yeah, sure. I'll get up. A, I'll queue up a, a swath of questions here. We'll start in the back and go forward. Okay, so um, J Rocker ninety one responded. How deep is the Mississippi? That's an excellent question. Um, you know, I threw a rock in. For those of you that know. Uh, Cannibal the Musical. I've been throwing out Cannibal the Musical references, so uh, it's uh, 
<laughs> the guys that made South Park, it's like their first thing they ever did. They did they made it on like March break when they were in film school. And it's like so bad, but it's amazing. At the same time, it's actually really smart. And uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I've been making some references to that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't yeah. imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that, that Breckenridge. Any more rivers between here and Breckenridge? Oh, the Nifty Dippy, the biggest fucking river I've ever seen. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have are just doing that live. <laughs> um, shoot. Okay, well, your video froze. <laughs> so I'm going to take this short opportunity because we have the internet in front of us. The Mississippi is on average 9 to 12 feet deep. Uh, the deepest part is 200 feet deep near Algiers Point in New something. New something. That's I ran. I ran out of that little bit of text. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. Never mind. This was just an extension. The deepest river in the world is the Congo River in Africa, for whatever that's worth. Oh shoot, we freaking lost Paul. Okay, well. What do I do here? I can tell you about the Mississippi River. It's too bad I didn't, we didn't have anyone try to ask me questions so I can fill space in between these little internet times, but um, I am available for that. And, and wow, we've had a lot of people joining. I appreciate y'all coming, coming to watch. Come back, Paul. We all want Paul back. Hopefully he didn't run out of juice on his phone. That can be difficult. Um, starting up a phone. Takes a little bit of time. How did you meet Paul? Well, oh, thanks, Zach. <laughs> um, yeah, I met Paul. The first time I met Paul uh, in person was at the first ever Adrenalina Marathon um, in, in Florida. Um, where was that? Hollandale Beach. Um, so that was 2010. And uh, shoot, I thought he was going to just like, I mean, I really, I really wanted to win that race because I was, uh, I was geared up for it. I felt like I had it, you know, had a shot, but I also um, felt like Paul was the, you know, potentially the fastest in the world. And uh, he, he was at the time he had an off day. And to an, to an extent, I got lucky um, that that was the case. Um, because maybe he would have just crushed my spirit on day one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I met him there. Um, gosh, he was like a freaking, he, he was a, a hero to an, to an extent, you know, like, um, we didn't really talk a whole lot before the race because I think everyone was like nervous and kind of getting in, in the zone and everything. Um, but uh i was able to 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 win that race and then after after i won we went to you know we went to and had a party afterward and everything and uh paul and i talked a lot got to know him um and then you know we we continued racing for the next you know couple years against each other going back and forth um trading trading wins and uh and trading moments in the, in the races um you know drafting each other all that good stuff paul's been a um an awesome competitor um, for me as an as an athlete, um, and also uh, you know a good friend the whole way through. Um, Earl asked me, "How's T's arm doing?" Well, T's arm is broken, so um, you know he's he's doing all right. Uh, we got I got X rays upstairs on the refrigerator. He's he's doing okay. Paul, if you're there, you. You put in a request, buddy, um, or, uh, or or maybe someone else has a phone you can borrow. So, yeah, that's what's going on. I guess uh, for those who are watching right now, I guess I can chime in with um, some, like, Pantheon news. Um, I'm in my computer room right now, so I'm not, like next to all the gear but we've been working on a on a surf skate that i'm pretty excited about um that's kind of been the latest like current project um 
and then we've I've been working on bringing the uh, um, the sacrifice back. I've had some requests for it, and um, people you know people have asked me to bring it back, and and I you know it's hard for me to bring something back exactly in the way that it existed before. Um, so I've been working on the design and trying to make it different and more, more perfect. Um, but you know, with the same kind of design motif, you know, micro drop, the size, um, you know, just bring everything in and kind of closer to the feet, um, and all that stuff. I did just get a request, but it's from, um, Pitbull. <laughs> that feels risky. <laughs> um, let's see. I'd like Paul to come back. So, um, so yeah, that's what we're working on right now. I've got a yeah sacrifice in the works. Oh, we also got a TKP truck um, that I've been working on. I wish I had it here. Um, it's in transit right now from the uh, from the factory. So I don't have that to show. I do have pictures, but. I've been kind of keeping it a secret, but I'll, I'll share that in this downtime when I'm like, don't know what to freaking say on live video that was supposed to be Paul on here. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we're working on a truck. I did some, some experimenting with my Paris trucks, um, where I, Hey, Paul, you're back. All right, we're bringing Paul back in. I think. Trying to bring Paul back in. Hey, he's back. My connection is really bad because uh, I'm in Idaho and they don't have Wi-Fi at this hotel. So how is that possible? I don't know, but it's gonna cost me 140 bucks to uh, add 10 gigabytes to my data, which is twice as much as my plan, which I get 40 gigabytes for the U.S. So you mean I don't understand how that math works. Oh. For us to have this convo, is that what just happened? You ran no, out of data? No, I haven't paid yet, so I'm fingers crossed I don't use my whole 40 gigabytes, but I was worried about Let that. Call. Oh, look, well, you know, we can... I appreciate it. Item. Thank you so much. But, I mean, you don't have to. But I we can... Sweet, that's my... I don't want to say hi, Miles. Is that good, Miles? Sure. That's my... <laughs> hey, Miles! <laughs> yeah, you're resting up, buddy. Get it. Try yeah. to a little bit at a time. Yeah. I, I'm bothering him though. <laughs> Hello, um, I have okay. room 32, and I'm wondering if you guys. All right, we should do questions. We should, we should okay. Rapid fire. Okay, shoot. Where did uh, where did my I'm, questions? Sorry. Okay. I had some good stuff from from Gab and Conti, um, as well, um, because yeah. after we were having some tr trouble getting responses today, at least in my head, um, <laughs> I, just, I was just like. I was like, geez, we're not going to have anything to talk about. So I started reaching out to Adam and, and Gavin. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I have 10 questions. The network Wait, one second. Yeah. The network is Thunderbird. So the network is Thunderbird. The password is Thunderbird 1. Thunderbird 1. Oh, no. Nice. Come on, Wi-Fi. Miles, saving the day, I think. <laughs> Let's hope. You know, oddly, I have I have Wi-Fi right now. We had a, I had a call in going in Europe earlier today, and our entire power shut off. Hey, he's back. Did that work? Yay! We got Wi-Fi now, so we don't have to worry about my, uh, me paying one hundred forty dollars to talk. I'm doing it right away. Yeah, I'm doing it right away. <laughs> I just don't see where it is for some reason. Uh, oh, I gotta turn this. I gotta turn that one off. Other networks. Sorry guys a little bit of um you know tech issues thunderbird i spelled it wrong of course thunderbird one and we're good okay we're totally on guys let's do this nice. hey yeah, yeah. So, you guys a bunch i got questions. i mean i got multiple questions from these guys but i'm gonna mm -hmm. i'm gonna throw this one at you about um nutrition what have you guys been using okay. while, while you're out there okay Sweet, sweet. Okay, so um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So 
Um, in the mornings, we wake up. We go to a Mavericks. Um, I buy, like, a muffin and a bag of, like, smart food. And then uh, have a coffee and buy a few Red Bulls and uh, some something with peanuts in it. And then... For the rest of the day, that's just to, so I have a little bit of something to act as a solid. So if my if I'm like my body's like you need to eat something real, then I can like put something in my stomach. And the Red Bull is just to kind of get me going because I'm off my ADHD meds right now. <laughs> so because it messes with my heart rate, so I try not to. Yeah. Hear, what's that? <laughs> like, what, what was that? I said I said that's because you're an American. You can't afford them. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can't afford them in America and. Um, so anyway, uh, what is it? So I, <laughs> it was really bad for me, but, uh, whatever. They're by, B, B vitamins. As a vegetarian, it could be tough out here. Um, so anyways, I, 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 we've been, uh, I use Morton gel. So it's hydrogel. So it's like a, a, a mixture that I make, uh, with water, with water without any calcium. So it needs to be purified water or, and then, um, you add the mix and it turns into a gel and it lets you absorb more carbohydrates per hour than anything else. Um, for the one day of downhilling, I actually took their bicarb, which has a bunch of, you basically make a really thick pudding, um, out of this carbohydrate mix and water. And it has these baking soda pellets and it's a bit of a trip. Like your body has, goes through a few moments of panic when it's, when it's actually absorbing, but then it takes away the lactic acid burn and actually makes lactic acid more readily available for use as a, as a fuel. And so it makes it so you can tuck longer and skate up hills faster. So I've done that on the one day. And then um, I've been using a lot of Tailwind. Tailwind is one of our sponsors. Uh, the Feed is one of our sponsors. That's how I got the Morton gel. And then uh, Tailwind, a lot of Tailwind, especially when it's hot because of the higher salt content. And then every once in a while, I'll have a little bit of um, a little bit, bit of uh, Accelerate, which is an old trick of, that I used to do, which was uh, protein energy uh, uh, electrolyte carbohydrate drink um, that uses a bunch of different metabolic pathways and also allows you to kind of repair a little bit as you're breaking your body down on the protein and soft tissue side. I've also been uh, supplementing uh, the odd collagen peptide thing and vitamin C to, in order to keep my tendon from blowing up. And it's the two days that I didn't take it was were bad. Like it got bad. It made so, like it was pay like I was like I was like I don't think I can finish this trip unless I get more of this stuff. So, um, just because I'm struggling with it right now, uh, yeah. That's, that's tough. Um, uh, freaking. Yeah, it really sucks to push yeah. and it be like crippling. That was <laughs> that got me learning how to push switch was just like dealing with you know Achilles tendon, tendon. and you know having to spread the wealth a little bit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Um so I, I mean that's that's it. I mean basically we have a van, so it's like we can we can pivot based on our needs, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And if I feel like I'm not getting enough protein, I can do whatever. I've got some Vega protein with me and then I've been also just buying ready made stuff at gas stations because it's cold and ready to go. And uh it's hot in the states for me like you can see i'm sweating like crazy right it's now. been brutal Ooh, you're, you're, you're lucky that you're up in the you know higher latitudes yeah yeah now we are yeah yeah it's yeah oh it's brutal down south i, I don't know i can do it uh, the first few days were hard for me but i'm starting to get it, the hang of the heat now now we're nearing two weeks so my body it takes about two weeks to acclimatize the heat so i'm just getting there now what, what, what altitude are you guys at right now do you know well, I think we were skating up around like, um, oh, geez, in feet, I don't even know. But we've been sort of hovering around the two kilometer elevation, give or take. Okay. Uh, which is yeah. like, like times, I don't know. Yeah. It's over, like over, a little over 6,000 feet. Yeah, well, it's closer to seven, right? Like, uh, yeah. or, or let me let me take a quick look here. That's right. Um, 0.6 or something. Well, what's Jackson? Jackson, Wyoming, uh, altitude it is um, Jackson, Wyoming is 6,237 feet. And then from there, 
Was that where we climbed the pass out of Jackson, the Teton Pass? Was it after Jackson? Or we... So yeah, so then we went up the Teton Pass. The Continental Divide, which was before that, was even higher. Yeah, that was um, eight or nine, nine thousand. Yeah, feet it was pretty high up there. It was pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I, I felt fine. I was pretty happy to be up there because um, I'm used to it. But um, yeah, no, I feel like it was, and then and then and we've been actually pretty high. Like we've still be like still been like five to six thousand feet, I think, for most of the day. And then now we just dropped down to I think three thousand six hundred feet, maybe right oh, wow. now. That sounds that sounds oh. hot. <laughs> that's what, so hot, humid here. Yeah, well, that's, comparatively. That's, right. that's what had me asking you that. Is just because like I was thinking about how hot it was here today, and like you know yeah. it at almost nine thousand feet so um like it's it actually stays fairly cool here but gosh going down to denver which is like 5200 feet is like it's brutally hot down there right now yeah no, no it, was, it wasn't that bad the last few days i felt comfortable we had one day where we actually got i got to skate the first leg wearing like one of my spin sweaters and it was so nice for me and i <laughs> i don't know if the other guys shared the same sentiment but but I, I thought it was nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, I think when I started the trip, there was a day where it got down to like six degrees Celsius above freezing, like, like first day of our skate. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And Melanie is like, it's just a little bit above freezing right now. <laughs> so uh, back home. So yeah. That's wild. That's not I mean, it's it fluctuates, okay, right? Yeah, yeah. It's also yeah, yeah. it's also 32 degrees Celsius, which is like I don't know, 70, 60 something, 70. I don't know. I, once you get in the higher numbers, I'm not 80, 80. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know the form. I'm bad with it. 40, 40 degrees is like 105. So. 40 degrees, 105. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we don't go that hot very often, uh, but. But I think we had a few days where like we're like 32, 36, uh, which is uncharacteristically warm for like, you know, uh, what is our spring before the solstice, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. 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 Okay, let's um. Cool. Let's, 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 for people. let's talk about less weather. Okay, so um, I got a, I got another one, which is um, what would what would you change on your setups if you could do it again from day one? Like, like, have you learned anything in the way that would have led led you to, to changing anything? Maybe I would run maybe like a soft. I'm I'm using like Riptide crank on the rear of the LDP Supersonic with the case Air K sixes. Maybe I would run like just a tiny bit softer uh, roadside on those bushings on the rear, just like one 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 bushing lighter. But that uh, it's not necessary. It's fine. Like it works good. Yeah. You guys don't have. Do you, you have a stack of bushings there that you're playing around with, or was that you put in? <laughs> Did, but then we had too much stuff in the van, so I ditched like a crap load of stuff on the east coast, and it's currently on the way to the west coast, and hopefully it gets there in time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got uh, I've got one from from Earl the Pearl, who uh who asked you what did you do to your quest to make it custom oh, i didn't do anything i just chopped the nose off i was gonna chop off the tail and then i went and played with it and it was just like ah oh, it's too fun so i kept the beaver tail even though i think chopping the tail is kind of more my like thing because i like being able to take the trucks on and off for ship for flying and shipping really easy right so just being able to slide them on and off and not have to take things apart is really nice um or being able to put them on and off of other boards if i'm in this situation yeah is pretty cool um i also like uh and i can manual on just the base plate with that 38 degree and uh, with the inward rake i can still manual and pop it up really well yeah. but the tail lets makes it a little bit easier to manual i don't have to be quite as accurate and um it also just sort of lets me like it's a little bit easier if i want to pop the board and jump up and do something in the air and like risk breaking my ankles, like on the skate across America, which is something that I do every, every once in a while. Did, so. did, <laughs> did you end up putting some grip on the tail? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah that's good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of yeah. stacks. <laughs> yeah. I got on the base plate and on the tail. 
Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Um, okay, this is a, a random one um, from Lord Reginald C. from Reddit. Um, yeah. Toilet paper oh, roll yeah. over under? Uh, toilet paper rolls in or out? Over under? Is that the question? You're skipping out for me. <laughs> and um, I don't know if that's a sign. Okay. Don't uh, answer uh, is it, was, was the question in, in or like over or under for the toilet paper roll? Yeah, that, that's, that was the question, yeah. So I like it where if it's on the wall, like see, this is the wall, I like it where the sheets are in the front, not in behind. So that way, you know, it's, it's it's easier to get to, and that way, if it's recessed in the wall, it doesn't like break off all, like at the wrong time. You can control it better, so that's 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 my my vote. Over, I think, is what you would say, right? If it's if the wall's here, toilet paper I, thing's here. The toilet paper goes this way, I, hangs on the front edge. I am seeing you do the opposite. Your um, or or yeah, I, I'm having a hard time hearing oh. you. You're uh, you're kind of cutting out. But what I hear, what I hear you saying is, is you like it over, over. So it's, a, you know, it yeah. rolls down. Yeah. And the front edge, the, the closer edge to you, it's where it's going down. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of a shame, kind of a shame we're losing you for that really important question. <laughs> really important, I know. I think, I think it's important for cats, maybe. I think some people think that for cats, having it the other way makes sense, but I have a cat. I don't think it makes a difference. <laughs> Damn. I wonder if this is me or if it's you. I'm pretty sure it's you, but I'm not 100% sure. It says that I What's have that? a good connection. You can hear me? It's, it, I can, yeah. I hear okay. you Hold well. On. I'm, gonna, I'm just going right. to flake out of here and back on. Okay. Well, everyone might have to come back. I asked. You should do it. Did that work? Did that make any difference? I can see. Everyone else, I can hear you. everyone else seems to be able to interpret what you said, and it might be. Maybe it's Jeff. He's in the mountains. Damn it! I do. I do have. I man, it's it's just been like that lately. Let's just. We've had a lot. Keep going. Hail keep asking. And then every... You guys give wow. me a thumbs down if I'm breaking up. Everyone can oh, give yeah, me a thumbs totally, down. It, this is totally. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Yeah. Breaking. Okay. Up. Did that work? I just pulled off my Wi-Fi and I have. I hear you. Yes. I have terrible cell service, but it's better than the Wi-Fi at the moment. Right. So I just so Jet Conti says yeah thank you yeah cool so we're we're good I, they can hear me okay. okay so what was the question and I can hear you it was it was toilet paper over or under yeah. that, you know yeah, I'm over oh. over over we're we're past that what's okay. the next one <laughs> we got the answer <laughs> all clear okay um all right let me so I got um Dino Rider from Real or Dino Rider for Real from Real. Reddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That, that that name. I love that yeah. name. I yeah. know. So I think I think he actually messaged you this asking why you he never he never sees you pump just push. Oh yeah. And you are yeah yeah. Answer. Yeah. Oh, did he post it? Well, he he told me that he asked you that, and he said you gave him an amazing answer. But I'm wondering if if other people might be wondering the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So the reason they don't see me pump. Few reasons. We're on an open road. The conditions are gnarly, and uh, for a really efficient pump, I think you want to have like a setup that's pretty active in the front. And again, having an active front can get you in a lot of trouble on the road. Like open road debris, sticks, roadkill, holes, core samples to cut out of the asphalt. You have semis beside you. You have trucks with boats. There's no there, Idaho. I haven't seen a lake since I got here. Everybody's pulling a boat. I think they just are doing it to show off that they have boats. Um, so, oh, I turned on my battery saver. God damn, I said no. Can you not? <laughs> Sorry, it's like 
Just give me a second while I try to figure out how to tell my phone not to be freaking dumb. Okay, I'm going to plug a battery into this while we talk. So, uh, what was I saying? Uh, well, you said everyone has boats and you think they're just showing off. Yeah, I think they're showing off. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, you don't want to have... You don't want to have uh, too much bump steer, I call it, where you're, yeah. where, where you're bumping things and not steering you. Mm -hmm. um, and so another thing, I mean, I got right into it. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, I think pumping, so a lot of people will disagree with me here, and that's cool. And I've had a few de debates about it today, too, if people have disagreed with me, and that's cool. But I think that when, like, when I'm sort of, I train so that way my tendons do a lot of the work. So I'm not pushing with my muscle. I do that when I'm slow. Once I get up to a certain speed, I'm still using the muscle, but it's really the tendon rebound that's doing the magic. And then on top of that, I, I talk. I'm talking all the time on the road. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a very active front end for that because I'm on chip seal. I don't want it hunting. I don't want to lose control. I have, you know, um, I don't want bump steer or wobs off the edges of of asphalt to send me in like off my course which could be inches away from a car right yeah um so so I, that's why i run that more neutral front end and i find that like so 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 those are two considerations but i also think that like honestly once you get above that 20 uh 12 miles an hour on like the type of asphalt that's on the road um on a still day the amount of wind resistance that you're getting I mean, once you get about 12 miles an hour, I think like 95% of your wind resistance is uh, is air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So pumping is great at extending your push, but it uses muscles. Um, it's a nice symmetric. So I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But uh, I can just push. I can bounce three, to four times, and then just tuck, and I roll farther. Then I can pump yeah. a lot of. Not always, not always, but often on the real road in real life, often I go farther. So I find that the efficiency, for me, it's all about efficiency. I'm not all that fit right now, so I'm just trying to be more efficient than everyone else. Sorry. But um, um, and then the, the other thing I was going to say is the, the downfalls to what I'm doing, the way that I skate, is that it's an eccentric, and it's a ton of eccentric load, and it's plyometric. It's very damaging. It can be very damaging. It stresses a lot because it's you, you're using your body as an, an elastic thing, right? Like, and you're just all day long, you're, you're causing it to be plyometric. It's the only plyometric endurance sport that I know of, like, really. Um, and it's high eccentric load, which is even more damaging. But uh, pumping, on the other, to contrast, is an isometric load for the most part. It's a little bit of activity in your, like, tibi uh, interior tibialis and your calf. But it's um, leg muscles, lower leg muscles. But it's, it's, very, it's almost isometric loading, so you're not blowing yourself up. So I understand there's tons of applicability for pumping. I'm not trying to, to knock it. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm pumping, I'm usually enjoying it on my nicely paved park pass mm -hmm. around country. And some people say that maybe I don't pump as well as I tuck because I don't practice, but I'm going to get salty here, and I'm going to say that those people aren't considering all of the factors because they're not considering air density. Like... It's just the thing. Yeah. Like talk to a speed skater. I, I, my, my boss is a, is, was a, a speed skating coach for the Chinese uh, speed skating team and got them all gold medals of uh, the year that he was coaching them. Huh. And then he came back to Calgary. And um, so, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Whatever. You guys can have your theories. But <laughs> I, I talk to other athletes in different sports. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think joke, joke, joke. Yeah, I love it. I, <laughs> it makes a, a ton of sense. I mean, frankly, like, I I pump when I'm feeling good, and I push and yeah. tuck when I'm tired. And and there's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, like, Pumping keeps you longer. You don't break down as fast. Yeah. But, but I don't think it's more efficient than uh, a plyometric push. Yeah. And now not everybody pushes a plyometric way. You have to learn it and develop it. And there's a lot more muscles that, that are involved than people think about. You have to engage your intrinsic foot muscles. You know, your big toe needs to be in the right spot. Like, it's very, uh, there's a lot going on. That, that seems like, you know, maybe, maybe Andy's five fingers aren't really, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. It's like, is it, is this? Is Actually, those are, those, are, 
good. Those are good. They'll train your feet to work properly. They will. They will. They'll help. That's funny. Well, okay. So let's keep this going. Yeah, we don't want to talk too much. Summarize. Pushing is breaking down your body less, or more, 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 more. It's more but it's more, more efficient. You're losing using less energy. I can keep my respiration and my heart rate way lower than anybody pumping. I think. Yeah. Right. And I can do that faster. Like, like there's a ceiling, there's a floor where below pumping, above pushing, and then maybe like, like, like it's just, it's just, and then I can, I can hold the world record pace and keep a base level heart rate. But yeah. can I do that for four hours? Eh, when I'm younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe. I'll Again. to talk about when you're when you're younger or what you know <laughs> now you know <laughs> it's, um but yeah the zero speed forces yeah i mean sorry yep i'm i'm a hundred percent believer in what in what you're saying i mean even like you know adam you know at the that, that's my other example is adam he's like did you pump a lot he's like i did a little but not really like in that when he got the ultra almost, he's like well, almost, if I, I i never saw it almost not yeah almost none because it's more efficient, and now I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail, and I, I'm sorry. But no, I'm only gonna get I mean, hate mail from, from from China. You know, it's funny when when we when when uh, when we went to China right before COVID, and you know, thankfully we got out of there without uh, bringing it home, as yeah. far as we know. But you know, like um, when we went to China for the Beijing Marathon, I remember like the Americans were like the only guys, only guys pushing. Everyone else wanted to pump for an entire marathon. And I'm just like, I'm like, I, I don't know. I just didn't make sense to me. I was like, you're, you, there's no way that you can hold, that you can even come close to our pace doing that. No, yeah. Because cause, cause, cause the thing is, is we can't push as fast as we can bounce. We can't. Mm -hmm. It's just not physically possible. Yeah. You have to use your plantar fascia. You have to use your hamstrings, like erectus femoris, and, and those tendons that insert at the base of the hamstrings. You can train those Nordic hamstring drops. And you have to use your Achilles tendon, right? And not just one insertion into the gastric nemius, but also into the soleus. You need to kind of train them both muscle groups to kind of tension the, the, that so in order to build those the, that, 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 the tendon. You need to load it progressively and you know blah 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 whatever right. we're not getting into that i don't i don't want to cut you off but i do i i'm seeing that it's 859 and i'm wondering if we're gonna if we're gonna get cut off we um, might get cut off let's just we're just gonna send it guys let's let's, let's rapid fire around i have questions you, too but do you uh okay here's go uh what's your most memorable fire. moment from the trip so far Okay, that's a tough one for me because it's a trip, so you forget literally everything that has happened like two days ago. <laughs> Yesterday is like a foggy memory of like years gone by because um, there's so much that happens. But, I mean, okay, the Shenandoah part was pretty rad. Uh, once I got into it, uh, there was a left, the fastest left hand. I just like sent it, and it was like a rocket ship. It was like, yeah. and that was, that, was, that was a really good feeling, so... Uh, I, I scared, maybe scared Jack a little bit, but since I didn't like lose it, he was, he felt confident after seeing me do it. So I think I made Jack, uh, I made Jack, Jack seemed to like me more after yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, Jack, by the way, is the guy that did the first push across America in 1976. Oh, yeah. He's driving this sport vehicle. He, he assembled, he chose who, who does this push. He chose, he's choosing like 12, 13 hours to skate. Basically, he's the boss. He's deciding what's going on. He wants to see how well athletes could do his method. So we're not doing, we're not min-maxing everything. We're not like, I'll skate through the night and you skate through the morning. Like, we're not doing any of that. Um, we're doing it Jack's way uh, to see how fast athletes could do it his way. And he also assembled the team based on personalities primarily, not necessarily the, the most athletic and just people that can offer different bits of experience. Yeah. Just so you guys know. It makes it makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, you know, I think, um, you know, obviously you're bringing a lot of skill to to the team that really can't be filled elsewhere. Um, you're you're one of the only distance riders that I know that you know can make it down 
Shenandoah, uh, you know, um, other, all, all, AKA Mordor, um, you know, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a fast road. Um, and yeah, that's <laughs> no, for well, on your setup with the eras, probably it was, you know, be okay. I but but you know, I, I really know a handful of different someone asked if someone asked if it was a Nexus or Quest. It was it was the Quest, it was the flexier one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so yeah, I tried I, to rip things and not slide too much because it'd be like a little black. You on that road, I would trust Adam on that road, you know, I yeah. I would trust. I trust that. I've done it before, so I trust myself. But to be fair, I haven't gone that fast in a while. So, like, yeah, uh, it, that I the fact that you did that on a distance board is just kind of mind boggling. So, um, yeah, awesome. I, I didn't. I didn't have the tortuga set up yet because I was sleeping two hours a night and I was like starting to get really sick. And then I gave it to everyone else, and we had a pandemic, <laughs> and it was bad. A pandemic. Everyone still coughing. Everyone's still coughing. Yeah, I, so, I don't know what it is. We were like, it would be funny if we tested COVID, and then we can make that part of the rules. You want to beat a so, record? You need to get COVID first. Thank, thank God, thank God, not. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you'd know if you had COVID. I mean, I can tell you from my yeah, no, experience. Been, oh. yeah. it's just, it's just, it's just the head and maybe down to here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, let's see what else. Uh, I wanted. What was your interest for going on the trip? What's the most, what? You cut out for the word that I need. Motivation for going on the trip. And motivation? Yeah, and, yeah. My, motivation. Mo my, mo my motivation for going on the trip, I mean, I don't really care too much about, like, I don't care about the record all that much. I think it might be useful, but to have a, another record, as, as, as people take my other ones, um, which is rad. Uh, but um, I think that, for me, I just, it was just, like, an opportunity to kind of be part of, like, to be involved in one of Jack's skates for me was pretty important. Yeah. Like that's the only reason why I did it. I, I have no care. Like the the backpacks are way cheaper than support vehicles. Oh my god. Um so for me it was really just Jack asked me and it was just like, yeah, the guy that started it all, like and I have an opportunity to actually be, you know, a footnote in that. And that's pretty rad. So I, I was like, yeah, I would love that. That would be super cool. And then to be able to hang out with him, so uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's why that was my, that was my main motivation. Um, I mean, it's also kind of cool to see you know skate across America. Uh, I get to see a lot of places that I might want to come back and check out some other time <laughs> because I can't really. Uh, Wyoming, like uh, the Western Wyoming, is amazing. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. It's going the whole thing. It, yeah, it's really it's just got those like the all the all the buttes and uh and then you've got like the uh the Wind River area that like uh, the Patagonia Yvonne really likes. He says it's like his favorite place in the world. And I think I and then yeah, like and then the stops along like the the Continental Divide Trail, uh the C D T uh through hike, like they're 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 all cool and like they kind of suit my vibe with that, like they, they cater to hiker trash, so you know that works. Nice. Medicine Ball National Park in Western Wyoming is amazing. I believe it. Believe it. Want it. I wouldn't mind coming back and checking it out. So there's a you know, and and, and you're only going you know one latitude the entire way across. Yeah, the we're just we're just freaking. Yeah, it's, it's, we're 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 not taking anything into consideration other than like, is it paved? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. I was trying to. Uh, I don't want yeah. to ask you about distinct pushing techniques because I you're that's a fifteen minute conversation. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I know better. I have. Uh, I I think I have like literally like probably over a hundred different techniques that I use. Um, like seriously, like based on the situation, based on the road, the grade, the surface, what vehicles are around me. You know, I'm using all kinds of stuff. Some of it's involved with listening. Some of it's involving like how I use, you know, my breath, my diaphragm, how that improves my stiffness and my toe off, my my neck flick when that's applicable and when it's not. You know, like I have like I, I I've been meaning to actually kind of like document this somehow, um, and then people can tear it apart. I want to see. I, I honestly want 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 to be involved in peer review. Uh, so one day maybe I'll get it. I need to get it. I have I have someone that will sponsor my master's degree 
but I need to get a bachelor's first. So that's the problem. So I need to actually have some time to do that and maybe money. Sometimes when yeah, I don't, use... don't worry, you're not overthinking it. Overthink away. But <laughs> just keep in mind, I also have, like, I'm also diagnosed with like my, uh, a slight degree of OCD. So yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's that. Uh, maybe it's maybe. Sometimes when you you go into these like technical things w with, with me like when it whether it's nutrition or the type of bush or anything it just baffles me it, it absolutely baffles me that we were ever able to race together i'm just like how 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 could how could two such different people you know even be competitive <laughs> you know and 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 be showing up you know at, 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 together on, on on race day and and be able to you know be crossing paths there it, uh, yeah, I mean, if, maybe you're just the real talent. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I thought I thought that I was working on something. I don't know something else, <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't that. I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, how would, autism, you, neurodivergence. How, how yep. would you advise? Uh, I progressed from 15 mile skates to 30 plus. 2.5 hours is my limit. Okay. Uh, so I mean, I would. Think about it as like 2.5 is your limit, like hard limit. You can't, you just want to increase the speed mm -hmm. of that 2.5 because um, it's it's actually probably better to slowly just increase like the amount of time, maybe by like 5%. Is it 5% a week or, or, and then, or is it, oh shoot. Yeah, I think, I mean, maybe I, I think I've, I, I figured maybe for skateboarding, I think I, I think I decided to, Seven percent, seven and a half percent per week uh, increase um, of distance is, and then and then every like six weeks do a deload of minus twenty five percent of your 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 or or more, right? But that might happen naturally with your life anyway. Um, I I think if you want to increase pace, what you want to do is you want to hit your target pace for a shorter period of time, and then you want to extend that. Trying to bring your distance and make your distance faster as a whole is a lot harder. Uh, your body doesn't want to do that. It's just not the way that it works. You want to actually like take your race pace, do it for shorter times, maybe do the distance that you want as well. But then you want to bring that, you want to extend your pace. You don't want to build your, you don't want to take your distance, your total distance, your total time and increase the pace gradually. You want to hit the pace and then you want to extend it this way. As, yeah. okay. uh, you want to spread it out, yeah. spread it out. That is one. Uh, that, that, I, could, I, I don't have citations for you off the top of my head. That's, um, but there's. That's one piece of technical data in terms of training that I would absolutely agree with you on a on a hundred percent. It's just like I, I even marathon. You did that. In yeah. For, for, for marathon training, it's like train the pace. Train like I. I that's yeah. almost the only training that I would even do. You know, it's like basically. You 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 get efficient at what you're doing too. There's efficiency. Yeah. When you start changing things, you, you start using more blood glucose in your brain to actually be able to do it differently. You need to be training at those conditions. Now, obviously, you want to push and nudge things by doing things outside of that. But, but when it comes down to it, you want to also develop a efficiency, uh, neuromuscular facilitation, like and like and and like and your like how the neural pathways are structured and the myelination. It, it, it all it's basically like taking spaghetti code and getting rid of all the extra stuff that you don't need and it just and then it reinforces a more solid simple path for the patterns yeah. and then therefore you don't need to use as much uh, energy to actually do these things and so you want to you you almost want to like like one trick people do is they'll run with a tailwind and so much as they get more efficient at that faster speed than they are at the speed they should be running at and then they can run at that faster speed when they couldn't do it Otherwise, yeah. right? Like that's I've, I've, that really building their their uh, you know neuromuscular you know reinforcing those pathways to make it easier. Um, I uh, somebody said jalapeno uh, stuff. Um, hot sauce actually does help with neuromuscular cramps, and uh, I also really like hot hot sauce, like competitive style hot sauce. <laughs> and uh, the and and I'd say what's really weird about it when it's super hot is I don't know maybe I have a problem, but like I feel it when I pee. Like more than anything else, like so that that kind of sucks. But oh God. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like super hot hot sauce, like where you you get like high from it and you have the impending sense of doom. Yeah. Uh, um. Let's see. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think we all know a lot about kinesiology. It's actually something that I should be doing at school. I just don't have, I'm just also really into other stuff. So I haven't been, I haven't committed to it. But my job, I'm basically employed as a kinesiologist. So, um, yeah, I mean, so I tend to look at it that way. Um, um, let me, let me do, um, let me do two more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. So uh, you guys got the the new loaded board showed up. How, what do, what do y'all have? You guys what are you talking about? What's that? Oh yeah. Okay. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. What, what was your question? Oh, like what what do you guys have? You guys been able to ride it yet? Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. I, I rode it on some milled asphalt. Maybe. Yeah. If it exists. <laughs> um, um, I didn't expect. Yeah. It's, any not, it's, not, it's not my setup. Yeah. But it's not how I just set a board up, but it was pretty comfy. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, and let's do a, a last one. Um, I, I have a couple that I should quickly get okay. to, too, but let, let, let's try that. You get your next one? No, you, you go. You go. I, 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 anything, everything else that was left was uh, kind of okay. passoverable. Okay. Um, uh, let me just uh, get back to the right spot here. Um, so we have right here questions. Okay, let me go through these really quick. Um, so, so back here, come on, load. Um, so how do you get into skate packing? I mean, uh, what I did was I wanted to go somewhere, and I had a skateboard and not enough money for a bus, but I worked in an outdoor gear store personally. So I had backpacking stuff. So I just combined the two. I also... I mean, the best way to get into ski packing is to spend some time backpacking. Learn what, you know, the core kids are doing in the backpacking scene. And um, also, you know, maybe get a driver's license. That could help. You should know the rules of the road. <laughs> and uh, and actually get spend some time skating. Don't go ahead and just, like, hey, I'm just going to, like, freaking right out of the gate skate, like, 2,000 miles. Like, you know, do an overnighter. Start in the afternoon. Skate, like st get someone to drop you off somewhere cool that's pretty safe. Like keep traffic in mind. Just don't do it on a long weekend in the parks, you know. And then like uh, go go for a little ride. Set up your campsite and a camp little campsite. Wake up in the morning, ride back, right? Like something like that. That's probably the best way to get started, right? To be honest. Or you can maybe like skate to the next town before you get a ride to Giant's Head, right? That was one of my early skatepacking trips. I skated to Red Deer from, um, that was Aaron Ennevolson's first skatepacking trip. Uh, we skated from Calgary to Red Deer, which is like 100 kilometers, 100, I don't know, 110 kilometers. And uh, we just camped out at night. Oh no, I think we actually stayed at a motel. But, um, and then we, we, we went to, we got just, we got a bit north of Red Deer and then we got picked up by some people that were taking a different route. Um, not the way that we would normally go, but a little more north. And then we sort of did a little scenic route and ended up in Giant's Head and skated the first Giant's Head together. Uh, so that was that was one of that was his first skate packing trip. He and I went to get picked up by guys in Edmonton, basically, uh, to get a ride to a Giant's Head. So short trips by yourself or go with an experienced friend. <laughs> yeah, and uh, honestly, probably doing it with a friend is probably not a bad idea, yeah. uh, especially and if you're in areas with bears, you know, make sure you know that stuff. Right. Make sure. And, and having friends is probably a good idea. Don't be like me. And then get chased by something in the middle of the night and not know what it is and uh, get scared. Or, or almost ride into a bicycle <laughs> one night. <laughs> nice. OK, next question. <laughs> Rapid fire. <laughs> it's been a solid. Yavier, Yavier uh, wrote. What is your favorite lunch during a trek? Um, oh, geez. Honestly, my favorite lunch is usually just whatever I can't get. Um, uh, normally, I can just no, – normally, it's food sucks. Uh, on the uh, Like, when you're in, like, the middle of nowhere for a lot of the time, you get to a place, and you just want something different. Um, <laughs> so I, I like certain ethnic foods. I think this trip, I've been really craving, like, Tibetan food. Uh, I just want Tibetan food so bad. And I uh, just can't find it, obviously, because I'm not I, I'm not even on like main highways to main cities or secondary. But we um, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think what I've been craving now is is that. Um, sometimes I really want a milkshake. That's a thing that I remember telling Adam Colton, just like milkshake, and then having like a a fever dream about it with at high altitude, the lucid dream where I like think I'm having a seizure afterwards and I have sleep paralysis. Um, but like that was, uh, I think for a little bit I was swimming in a milkshake, and that was good. All right, Tibetan food and milkshakes. And milkshakes. Yeah. Um, I like a Butro, Butro, and one of my friends up in Canada. Whoa, that got really big. Uh, favorite favorite stranger met on the road. <sighs> I mean, like on this trip. I don't know. We we haven't really been to, uh, really getting to know people on the road here too much. There's someone that I got to know. I'm gonna think about that one. Um, oh, geez, that's a good question though. Okay, so this uh, uh, cowboy named Marshall picked me up uh, um, when I was doing the Great Divide on skateboard, um, which I did in secret uh, when I after my leg surgery because I didn't know if I'd be able to do it, and it was it was rough, it was rough, um, and I did it in like September October, so it was like snowing on me and stuff at nighttime, but um, so I went and did the uh, basically like up the Icefield Parkway and then all the way back down to Waterton, so I like. Went north from, from Lake Louise, then I went through to the other side of the mountains, and then went down the um, the foothills, and then back over into Waterton National Park. And so while I was doing that, uh, this cowboy like like met me at a bar and thought like this guy's dressed freaking weird. And then he's like, "What are you doing, man?" And I told him what I was doing, and he asked like, and then I told him like that I had done farming, I had worked uh, harvesting grain, I've I have a class one. You know, I drive semi trucks and stuff like that, and he was just like, "Wow, man, this is so cool!" Like, you know, kind of like a "you're one of us" sort of thing, you know. And he's like, "You don't have a place to stay tonight, do you?" I was like, "Ah, oh, just sleep in the ditch." And he's like, "Want to stay at my place?" And we ended up having a, a really good talk. Um, obviously, like, yeah, we just really we, we spoke about politics and we spoke about, you know, I don't know, the province and and uh, and 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 farming and and my life and my life with the work stuff that I did, but also my life like skateboard world and how it is now, which is very different than what it was for the five years that I disappeared in the North, you know, and we, um, you know, kind of, kind of comparing our, our different lives. Right. And he, he like, you know, tends to cattle and rides horses, you know, for his job. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, Marshall the cowboy. So, that's my, that's Marshall the cowboy was like favorite. probably one of the, uh, Coolest people I can think of right now. That sounds. I mean, special. they're like, uh, you know, honestly, those kind of uh, life, kind of life-changing conversations that just come out of nowhere. Yeah, it's really nice when you give yourself time to have that. Sometimes I, am too rushed, and I don't give myself the opportunity, which is it just sucks. Um, but yeah, I think one of the advantages of skate touring, skate packing, is that you you enjoy the scenery at a slower pace and you give yourself the opportunity for these yeah. things. Uh, so I think it's important that we don't just focus always on pace, right? But sometimes you just need to get home in order to make sure that you're there for your son <laughs> and you got to get So, you know, no. sometimes that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like that was Alaska. Alaska was, I mean, I could have skated 200 kilometers every day, but that payment was so bad, I was lucky to get like 80. And in order to get 80, I usually had to skate like 15 hours. <laughs> so the payment was so bad. And I mean, I would do 150 or whatever, but like I had to skate a lot. And that, because I had to make it home in time or else I'd be in trouble. I wouldn't be able to, I needed to get Enzo ready for school. So yeah, uh, had to make sure I was there at the right time. So yeah. Okay, cool. Good question. Um, oh, they just liked my story. That's that's not useful. Uh, Wanderlust Starlust says, "How's the road rash doing?" Oh yeah. Uh, it sucks. Today was bad. Today was bad, and I kept sticking my tights kept sticking to my legs. So every time I would get in the van, I'd have to peel them off to be able to bend my knee, and then to get out of the van, I had to peel them off to straighten my knee, and then I would skate and it would hurt, and I have a wound on my foot. And I was totally bare ass on the pavement. Like I was wearing tights that don't go up over your butt. Like they just like stop at your thigh. And I was wearing like 
zero inch seam fucking running shorts. And so those flipped up as I was, because I fell, the board did a 180 underneath me, and I was going down the hill backwards. And I used the slide pucks to keep my head from hitting. And I slid on my bare butt, like probably 50 kilometers an hour, whatever that is. It's not very fast, but it's fast enough. I mean, it could have been 55, 60, which is in miles, I don't know, like 40, yeah. 30, 40. So 30 to 40 range, 30 to 42. And uh, that's rough. brand new. Steps. Normally I can ride over that stuff like no problem, but I was like, but I, this is brand new and just set my board for a spin and I landed right on my butt and I tore my really expensive aero tights, which have been really nice for the wind. And, uh, and I tore one of my really expensive wool, comp- merino wool compression socks. So that sucks. And I didn't shave my l- lower leg. I just shaved where the tights had the sticky stuff. And so it pulled all the hair out. And so it's like all torn up on my lower leg. And then I, like, have a spot that's, like, that deep on the side of my foot. Uh, like, I didn't know the skin went that deep. So, uh, sweet. <laughs> find third way. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's gross. So that, that sucks in the shoes. You guys have cover all, all stretch there? You ever you ever use that stuff for uh, for road rash? We have a bunch of Tegroderm. Andy is a, a, a firefighter EMT. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, was, like, I think an army medic or army firefighter, actually. So he he has, like, a bunch of supplies. Um, Tegroderm is not my favorite for this stuff. I think that there are better products, but that's what the medics, the, the firefighters yeah, use. Yeah, they always um, so that's what one that's what that you have to change all the time. That's what I, that's why I use this, uh, I use yeah. the raw stretch stuff. That it's, like, it's basically. Hydrocolloid. Like, it's what? Yeah. yeah. It's a hydrocolloid bin. Yeah, yeah. And it, like. Filled with fluid and then it gets it, it pressurizes and it stops yeah. you from weeping and you heal like thirty percent faster. I, it cuts off thirty percent of your healing time. Stuff is money. Anytime I get road rash, that's yeah. what I'm using. Uh, uh, a German doctor tipped Adam, Aaron, and I off about that stuff in in Peru after we had a pretty bad crash, but especially Aaron. And so we got these really gross pads. It was called algal plaque. That was what you can get in uh, in Peru. It was based on algae, but it was a hydrocolloid. And man, that made it heal so much faster. We were just like, "This is amazing." Mm. And so I've never gone back to anything else. But yeah, <laughs> algal plaque or hydrocolloid advantages. Um, so the next question. So yeah, that sucks. Um, my uh, brother-in-law Ian also asked something around the, the same. Actually, I'll just bring it up. Uh, um, so the next questions. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we have. Uh, um, friends liked it. What considerations do you mean make for plotting where you're going on distance tracks? Um, basically, I'm, you know, I, I just mainly want to go somewhere cool. <laughs> um, uh, but like, where do I stop? You know, I I, I, I like to kind of know that there's going to be places where I can filter water. Um, you know, uh, a lot, but a lot of it is like being a sca- it's like a scavenger hunt. Like when you're on the road by yourself solo, it's a scavenger hunt. With the van, it doesn't matter as much. You can pretty well go where you want. Yeah. Um, because you're supported, and at the end of the day, you can drive somewhere. But um, when you're by yourself, you really do need to kind of think about logistics. Um, you know, you can't expect to go up like do a very long desert stretch with no water, with just like a couple 700 milliliter bottles or a couple like. I don't know, 16 ounce bottles or whatever they are. Um, like what what you need to do is you need to like plan accordingly. Like in Peru, there was there were a couple stretches where I needed to carry like nine liters of water. So I had I didn't do that regularly. I would maybe go between two to three liters, and even now I I, bear, I maybe one and a half is often my max load um, because I try to reset up. But um, in there was there there have been stretches in my life where I've needed to have more than seven liters, and so I needed to make sure that I had the capacity and the plan. I couldn't just cram bottles in places because my bags are getting smaller as I as I get more more efficient and more acquainted with what I need and don't need. But you just can't just cram stuff in there. You need to select everything based on your needs. Um, uh, and then yeah, I look at the maps. You keep an eye out for gravel, but you can never really know. The road throws you all. The, the road the road is in charge, man. You're just kind of trying to you're trying to surf that wave of concrete. <laughs> yeah. Are you using a uh, bottle for bags when you do those long those long trips? 
long trips, I I usually just use, a, I have a backpack with a bottle holder here and here. I put my camera on this one and bottle here. And then I have usually, um, yeah, I don't know, I usually just use like, you know, I, I get sentimentally attached to like a Powerade bottle or something and I just reuse it. And <laughs> it's like my will, right? Yeah. And then and it dies in the trip and I'm like, yo, my water bottle. So the, my non-reusable water bottle that I've been reusing for like a month. Um, uh, but um, I also like, often I like, to, the consideration is first, does it fit very securely into my backpack? Mm -hmm. The second is weight. Is it is it lightweight? Yeah. Right. And 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 then the third is how annoying is it <laughs> to use practically? Um. So I you know I try to that's a consideration. Uh, for this trip, I'm wearing like a like a stretch belt that goes around my waist and it has a spot for my phone, spot for a tiny little skate tool and a little bit of like chapstick, and then on the back I can put a soft flask bottle. And so if I'm it's really hot, I'll put some of my drink mix and put it on my back. But otherwise, if it's only a five-mile leg, I just drink a whole bunch and get a comfortably full or mildly uncomfortably full stomach, and then I just go out for my uh, for my leg. But if it's killer hot, I will, like, carry some extra with me because it just makes you faster if you're not, like, dry mouth and low on sugar. Mm -hmm. so, um, um, Ruth, Ruthifer, oh, sorry, we're not there yet. We're at uh, Zig Squidly. The what considerations? Oh, that's the one that I just said. Ruth the first said, "Why does your face look like that?" Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, I named Ruth Ruthifer. That was my name for this person. You guys don't know who this is, but <laughs> uh, why does my face look like that? Because I saw your face, and now I'm like this forever. Oh, um, Chauncey skates everywhere. Yeah, Chauncey skated you know, across BC to get to Danger Bay. And now he's hanging out over there in BC. So do you use the same grease for your bearings that you gave me? It's awesome. Yes, I'm using that, but I'm also using it something that's a little faster as we went over earlier. Uh, but that grease is, if you want to set and forget, you don't want to touch your board, you don't have time for maintenance because you're just skating all day and trying to find food and water and like you don't have time for much else and setting up camp and, you know, you know, whatever, hanging your food, you know. Uh, and you don't have a place for your board to go. You're sleeping in a baby bag. You're just going to leave your board out in the rain. Guess what? Throw some grease, waterproof grease. Clean off all the oil. Fills waterproof grease or maybe a marine grease, but I think that's a bit slower. Throw that in the bearings. Give a coat of the outside of the bearing too and just set and forget. And just leave it out. Ride it through puddles. Leave it in the water overnight. Who cares? Ride it in a, on, on the salt flat. Like uh, it, it'll, it'll work. Um, is it the fastest? No, it's not the fastest. That's why I'm using two different sets. Yeah. Um, but if, if you if you don't if if saving time on maintenance is important to you, or you're, you don't have the ability to like sometimes you have to maintain your bearings every day if you're on the road. Um, the first ten days of this trip it rained like almost every day. Uh, so like you know. The other guys are doing maintenance or not doing maintenance and having the bearings seize up and having to swap bearings. And I would just ride the greased ones and I didn't have to worry about it, right? So, Money. Yeah. I, I literally, like, never grease my bearings on any of my long ski trips. I just put it in the first time and that's it. Set and forget. If it fails, I want to be, I want it to fail on me and then I want to be able to tell everyone else that. And that it didn't work. And you've got a, but so far, you've got a YouTube video for this. I have a YouTube video. Yeah. I have a YouTube channel, people. Check it out. <laughs> it's new videos every year. <laughs> <laughs> what's, sh shout out to what? What's your What's your video channel called? What are you even using right now? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, it's, it's Paul Kent's at Paul Kent Skates is what they do. Because okay. um, I had to. They had I had to change the name to work with their the at symbol thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Paul Kent skates. Cool. Okay. Um, How many more? Oh, or, or just Paul Kent. Uh, I don't know very many. Um, how do I convince my kid that scooters are stupid and longboards are awesome? <laughs> so my son uh, used the scooter to teach him both how to push a skateboard and kind of like understand two wheels for riding a bike. And then I threw him on a bike and he could ride it. And he was a little apprehensive about the skateboard because he could just do the scooter better. And so what I did is I got him a pranayama, 
And that seemed to have helped because it's lower to the ground and he just understands a bit better. I'd put softer bushings in it and I got him a color of wheel that he really likes. And so, so far, that so is, good, right? That's important. Soft bushings, so you can burn it. Soft bushings for kids, man. Kids, you got to get your kids like 70A is hard as a hard bushing for a kid. Yeah. And okay, it's a hard bushing. And then get the color of the wheels right because almost the entire, the entire sticking point is like, do I like this thing and do, and, and, and is that, you know, that is, as long as they like it and they think it's cool, they're going to write it. And yes. Yeah. Get them, let, let them pick the board. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, he wants pink wheels. And so. I think I, I owe you money for those. Oh, I? I got paid for those. Yeah. <laughs> Send me an info. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's how I convinced my son that, I mean, I didn't convince him scooters are lame. I just gave him another option. But, uh, and then I'm going to slowly win him over by teaching him techniques. And hopefully he'll be better with the techniques and then become more empowered to skateboard mm -hmm. as opposed to, if they're going to pick whatever they're best at. But if you make it cool, make it fun, give them some time, slowly build the techniques, eventually they'll understand that the skateboards are a little more safe, you know, because you can not hold on to them. When you were your hands. Uh, when you first skating with Enzo, did you do the whole like slingshot thing constantly? Because I, I did that with T when I started getting uh, on the board. Uh, no, I mean, I, I might be a little bit more like brutal. I'd just be like, <laughs> this is how you do it. You gotta learn how to stand on one foot. Like stand on one foot. Okay, you want to put your socks on in the morning? Guess what you got to do? Stand on one foot. Don't lean against the wall. Like, wow. you know. <laughs> All this is making sense in my head now. I wish I would have done that because we did slingshot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no, slingshot. Okay, I do do that a little bit. But but he has to kind of work for it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I want to see him really like, yeah. you know, I, I, want, I want to reward, I want to reward slingshot work. Slingshot at this point is now like, like I have worn myself out and we have to get back to the <laughs> car. <laughs> For sure, same, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Kimberly liked my story. Okay, that's it. Uh, uh, Beefcake Skates, uh, maker of really cool slide pucks. I use their risers on this trip, and on downhills, I'm using their um, their um, um, patties. They're like the patties, but they're bigger. Uh, so they're slide pucks. Um, I like the ri I wear slide pucks when I do distance. I had to do a leg today. I couldn't find one of my gloves in the van with only one glove, and I was terrified. Like, I don't understand LDP people not wearing side gloves. You can just make them yourself. They last over a decade, like 15, 16, 17 years now, my gloves are. Um, I have super thin pucks. I can pick my nose. They're fingerless. I can touch my screen. I can, I can uh, you know, I can use my camera, like my fancy frigging cameras, gimbals, and drones. I can do all that with these slide pucks on. And if I fall down, which I do, like I'm going to vote. Once every 1,000 miles, I trip on some pebble, and it just stops me, stops me, stops me, and then I lose it. And the slide pucks keep me from hurting myself. Um, and if I didn't have slide pucks when I crashed the other day, I would be freaked up. I could have had a broken collarbone, broken wrist, for sure. So, yeah. like, That's man, super. slide pucks, dude. I, I, don't work, I do the ultra skate with slide pucks. Like, if I fall, I'm not going to get hurt. So like at that speed so I, there's no downside to them wrist guards suck they're gonna you still tear up your hands with the wrist guard they're not the wrist guards too small so anyway side pucks guys you know serious yeah so uh beefcake gates asks when are we gonna skate homie um I'm, when i come home i've got uh wheels already in claire's home and so i'm gonna bring you your wheels and i'm going to uh, maybe maybe we can go do some runs but i'm not pushing Probably uh, when I'm home. It's because I'm good. <laughs> Ten miles, I'm feeling you. Yeah. Okay, we gotta cut, we gotta shut this down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. What most sleep. unnecessary piece of equipment? I don't know. Yeah, I gotta let Miles go to sleep here. Um, I gotta go to sleep too. I gotta get up super early. Yeah, man. Uh, um, I think that that's everything. Top mount pumper versus Pantheon supersonic. I think I haven't really done the. Too close together, but I think the top mount. I think I I enjoy the feeling of the top mount. Um, but for practicality, the supersonic because pushing for me, I'm used to the lower thing. It's better for ergonomics. Uh, the supersonic actually just gives you a lot of options for a board. Um, so I really like that. It's easier to set up. 
the supersonic. But for feel, you know, if it wasn't hybrid use, um, I might might prefer if I was just strictly pumping and not doing anything else. I think I might prefer more of a top mount. I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? You have more experience with that. Pure fun, pure fun top mount. But to be fair, like but, I think covering distance is fun too. You know, and so like I, yeah, yeah. So the supersonic. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't. I don't want to say I haven't taken out my top mount pumper in a while. Actually, I the truth is I haven't taken out my top mount top mount pumper in a while. And I was just thinking about it the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, why haven't I taken out my top mount top mount pumper? But the reality is that like most of the time skating, I'm trying to cover ground, and I it, you know yeah. yeah yeah me too. No, I think that's I think that's exactly my mindset. Uh, last question was from my brother-in-law who asked how the leg is healing and I don't know if it's going so great, but um, I'm going to, I think it's, it's, it's okay. I'm just dealing with it. Well, it was great. Uh, so speaking of that, I do have to go to bed. Uh, we have to get up, I think at like four something because we want to get going yeah. at dusk yeah. and, um, and I need to take my bandages off and rebandage them. And that's going to take probably three minutes and uh, I'm going to have to clean it off and, see if I'm getting an infection. So fingers crossed there. But that's what I'm gonna do right now. We are right on the cusp of seeing your ass. So I guess we can call it. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably true. Okay. So. Thank you very much everybody, especially those of you that stuck around for the whole thing. Like you guys are studs. Like that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Um yeah. Thank you. I will do my best safety second, I always say. <laughs> safety second. All right. I'll do my best. Hey, hey, man, good luck for, for the rest of the trip. Uh, you guys only have, like, a state and a half left to go. So, uh, yeah. yeah, man, I'll uh, look forward to, to, you know, chatting with you along the way. But, um, but you know, every, everyone, hopefully we can all get a post, you know, at some point that, you know, we get to – we get to see you guys cross the cross the finish line and, and looking at that Pacific Ocean. Um, congrats on taking such an awesome adventure. Uh, it's really fun to watch. Thanks for letting us be a part of it. Thank you. I think, I think, yeah, I appreciate this part. Um, it really helps. And yeah, thanks everyone for paying attention. And uh, you know, let's see how it goes. But so far, so good. Good luck with that ass, buddy. Yeah, it's not an adventure until something goes wrong. <laughs> All right. See ya. Okay, see ya. Have a good night, guys.